Welcome to Amateur Hour, where I, an amateur like yourself, introduce you to a topic that you want to know about because, well, I did too. So what we've got here are two different types of enameled copper wire, otherwise known as magnet wire, or sometimes called hookup wire, because this is the kind of stuff that you use often on circuit boards where having a, a sheathing around the wire would just make it too thick and not worth it. So you just want this thin coating. Now, a question that I had until the day when I did a ton of experimentation that you are having because you're watching this is how do you most effectively strip the enamel so that you can use the wire? So there's three methods. We're going to go through each of them. And the first is to use your soldering iron. The second is to use an X-Acto knife. And the third is to use sandpaper. So this right here is 0.1 millimeter or about 38 gauge. And this is 28 gauge or about 0.3 millimeters. So we're gonna start with this because it's really easy. Uh, because the enamel on this is red instead of kind of a copper color, um, it's easier to, to see the enamel coming off and to work with. And it's, it's nice and thick too. So it'll, it'll just be easier to do everything. Uh, so first of all, let me just show you here. I'm gonna pull out Mr. Multimeter. Let's get him on. Um, and just prove that neither of these are conductive. So I've got it in uh, the mode that beeps when there's continuity. For some reason, part of the tip isn't very... <laughs> there we go. It's got it. All right, so we're gonna get on either side of this wire and we can see there's no continuity, so we know that it's enameled. And then, same here, there is no continuity, so there's infinite resistance. Here, there's near zero resistance. If we just tap them together. So let's get that out of the way and get going. So first, I'm gonna heat up my iron to 400 degrees Celsius, because I've found that that's about the optimal temperature. I could do 375, but anything below 375 becomes more difficult. And if you get above 400 degrees Celsius, then you start to get funny behaviors. And I'll show you that later on. So, because like the advice that I saw was, oh, you just turn up your soldering iron to the highest temperature it gets to and you just burn it off. And that's actually not necessarily a good idea depending on how high your soldering iron goes to, especially if you got one of the cheapo ones like in the $15 kit that doesn't have real accurate temperature on it. Anyway, first thing I'm gonna do is just wet the iron a little bit. And uh, at this temperature, I'm gonna pull in my uh, fume extractor, because at this temperature, the rosin in the solder immediately evaporates. And in fact, it would probably spatter if I was using a larger core. All right, so almost as soon as I put that on there, it just starts to oxidize right away. So first thing I'm gonna do is just clean my tip a little. All right, you can see it's a little shinier. And then I'm gonna put some more solder on it. And the way that I found it works well is to get enough solder that it forms kind of a blob. So I'm gonna put quite a bit on there because we want a nice blob to form underneath, almost there. Okay, so now we've got this nice blob. And then, let's see if I can get this in focus. You can see the very tip of this. Well, you can't from that angle. But if you look closely, you can see the very tip has the copper tone to it. So just cutting it, of course, removes the enamel from, well, there is no enamel on the inside. So just cutting it, we can start to see the tip. Now, at this temperature, what I'm gonna do is insert the the strand into the blob there and a little bit of smoke goes up because the enamel is literally burning off. So if you look here, let me clean the iron real quick. And then uh, I'm gonna put it in its holder and it's gonna oxidize like crazy. Turn off the fuel extractor for a second. Okay, so if you look there, all the way around, I'm turning this 360 degrees little by little. 
It's a little awkward because I'm holding the spool in my hand to do it. But all the way around, we've got solder attached to the wire. Now I'll show you at a lower temperature later, but if the temperature's not hot enough, then even though this says on it, and both of these were sold saying that um, just soldering them would remove the enamel. So it says right here, temperature rating 155 degrees Celsius. Uh, but that is definitely not the case, because when I try it 300 degrees Celsius, the solder doesn't stick at all, it just beads right off. So at 400 degrees Celsius though, in fact, about anything above 350, that enamel will melt, but at 400, it seems to get the job pretty quickly, uh, done pretty quickly and pretty reliably. So that's with that larger one. Now with this one, the only way that we're going to be able to tell uh, is if the solder sticks. Of course, that's how we showed it with the last one, but um, well, we'll get to the other methods and you'll see, of course, this one is, is much more difficult because the color is nearly the same as the wire. So uh, I'm going to turn my fume extractor back on and we're going to go. And you, you may notice a subtle difference in the way this solder works. It's actually 6337 rather than 6040. It's, I won't go into it right now, but it just works slightly differently. It's a euclidic, so it is either a liquid or a solid. And the 6040 has more of a, a temperature at which it is soft, but this is either hard or liquid. And I just happen to be using it because I got a big spool of it. So now I'm going to get this closer. And this one, because it's so small, it's going to try to travel away from that bead. So I'm going to try to insert it right in. Now normally, also, um, holding, you know, if you've got 400 degrees Celsius, you don't want to hold something right in your fingers that's so close to it because you're burning your fingers. But in this particular case, because it's so small, it dissipates heat very quickly. So hopefully you can see that worked really well. We've got a nice tin, and in fact I inserted this thing further than I thought that I had. We've got a nice tin all the way around. So that method works really well. I'm going to go ahead and turn the iron down to 300 degrees Celsius. And it'll take it a minute to cool down. But I'll show you what happens at that lower temperature. I'm going to go ahead and clean my iron again. And I would caution you, I have to get the camera so close to this thing that sometimes I'm looking through the camera instead of looking with my eyes, but through a camera, of course, you don't get depth perception. And so I actually stuck this thing right on my thumb. Uh, a couple minutes ago when I was trying to do a take of this and uh, ran out of space on the phone. But you can see that white spot there is like an, an insta-burn. Didn't even, didn't even blister. Just insta-burn. Because um, I poked myself. Alright, so good. The iron's now down at 300 degrees Celsius. So we're going to repeat the same process here. And I can maybe turn the fume extractor off because the fumes are going to be less bad. They're not going to come pouring out like they were because at that 400, it just sublimates the rosin. So it'll be a little bit of fume, but not quite so bad. Okay, again, I'm going to get myself a nice ball of solder. And uh, I'm going to put a ton more on there, actually, just so we get a nice big ball that you can see. Okay, so you can see that nice big ball. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna pick another spot on here, and I'm going to get the wire covered in that solder. So I got to get a nice big ball in order to get it around. Look at that. It it would not catch to it. So it looks like it tarnished the enamel ever so slightly but it didn't do a good enough job. Oh, come on, get back on there, there we go. You wanna stay, you wanna stay, don't lie. So let's try it one more time. 
Yeah, you can see at, at 300 degrees, it just won't take. I'll even, I'll even put the iron right on top of it. This is a silicone mat that's meant for doing these kinds of experiments. All right, so I've got the enamel right in the center of it, leaving it there for a few seconds. Let's see if it takes. Okay, it looks like it looks like it took. But let's heat it up and see if it stays or if it comes right off. Oh, look at that, it comes right off. So despite it saying right here on the label that it's only rated for 150 degrees Celsius, 155, that enamel is temperature safe up until somewhere above um, 300. And, and it's got a little tiny bit of marring on it. So this I probably wouldn't use on a circuit board because it looks like there may be just the tiniest amount of area exposed that is not encased in the enamel anymore. But it's just not a good temperature to, to, to try to do this. And, and since this dissipates heat even quicker, I'm not even going to, well, no, I will. I will attempt it to do with this. But it'll be hard to tell even if it does work. So I'm going to go ahead and heat that solder up. Get this right down in it. Oh, I can't get it to break the surface tension. Come on, break, break, break. There it goes. There it goes. Now I'm just going to leave it there. Let it get nice and hot. And see if it comes out or not. I'm going to have to inspect it with my eye. And then I'll try to bring it up to the camera, depending on the results here. Okay. So this one, actually, it doesn't look great. It's still spotchy. But it was enough to mess up the enamel. I don't know that I'd say that it was enough um, to make it great. So let's go ahead and cut these and put them off to the side. And let's try method number two. Also, where's my scraper board? I like to keep my work area clean. You can see a little bit of the rosin left over there. Put the solders out of the way. Okay, so take two, X-Acto knife. Now this is a method that I find to be very nice because it's very precise. It's not as convenient but it's more convenient than sandpaper. So you can take an X-Acto knife or a razor or maybe something else, and you get to decide you know, pretty much exactly what the length you want it to be. And I try to use the end because I don't like to dull the tip out. And you can see that's coming right off, and I get to be pretty exact with where I want it to come off at. Okay, now I flipped it to one of the sides, trying again. All right, now flip it a little more. The frustrating and tedious thing with this though, is that as you turn it, you always will miss a spot, like always. It's just very, very difficult to rotate at just the right uh, angles so that you get the enamel off on all sides. At least I find it to be quite difficult. Also, there's the potential drawback of making your X-Acto knife dull. This is actually, I've done this a couple times with this one and it seems like it is getting a little dull. You can see it is coming off, but it's a little tedious to keep on flipping it around and around and around and always being like, oh, I missed a spot. Okay, so I'm going to bring this up to inspect if I 
focus, focus, focus. It'd be nice if that didn't look so incredibly red. All right. So it looks like we got it all the way around. There's a couple spots where there's still a little on there. Let me inspect it with my eye up close. Yeah, the length is not perfectly uniform, but it's pretty uniform. Okay, so now I need to clean my iron up a little bit. All right, good. And if ever you find that your iron's not taking solder very well, just clean it a little bit, put a little solder on it, even if it takes it a second to melt, and then clean it up again, and then uh, rinse and repeat, and then you'll find that it heats up really nicely again, takes the solder, works great. Okay, so here we are. Now I can tin this wire so that if I want to put it on board, um, it's pre tinned that's going to make it easier to get it to stick on a board as well. So now, whoops, let's see if we can bring this up to you, or you can see as well. And the tinning was very successful. It took evenly the whole way around, uh, other than that there's a couple spots where the knife was scratched a little bit further than others. And visually inspecting it, yeah, I'd say that's very good. That'd be very, very easy to solder to a board. Okay, so now we're gonna try it with the super thin one. Actually, I, I changed my mind. We're going to go straight to the sandpaper. So let me clip this here. There we are. And I've got some sandpaper. I don't remember what grit this is. Let me see if it says on here. It says it's P60, which I don't know if it matters. Well, I'm sure it does matter. Uh, probably finer sandpaper works a little better, and this is probably not as fine. Probably something closer to P300 would work better. Um, but what I do is I just fold it in the corner there. Well, I don't even need to put it in the corner most of the time, actually. Um, put it between my fingertips and I try to make sure that it's pretty even on both sides so I'll try to refold this here because it's not quite even because the more even it is the easier it is to do this okay let me back up a little bit oh wow I was way zoomed in there and then I'll just bring this forward instead okay so there's about the amount that we want it to be put pressure on both sides I put it in a little further than I want to scrape it off And I just pull on it. There we go. And do it again and again and again. And it's mostly coming off wherever the pressure is on my fingers. Uh, I cut this too short. It's a lot easier to do it while it's still on the spool. You can see though, it's coming off. And I don't know, between this and the knife, it's hard to say which one's more tedious. The knife's certainly more accurate. Maybe you could devise a way of doing it with the sandpaper that's just as accurate or more accurate. Oops. Okay. So, it's much more spotchy. But... It looks like we got it all the way around. I'm going to inspect it with my eye. Yeah, there's there's a little bit of the enamel on in one part that might be a little bit of trouble to us. Well, no. At its shortest, right there, we definitely got enough of the enamel off. But everywhere else, it's about twice as long. That's fine, though. So I'm going to go ahead, take my iron, and uh, get some clean solder on it. Because while it's been sitting there... I don't know whether it's the rosin or oxidization, but it got a little colored. And generally speaking, we don't want to see color, we want to see nice silver. So I don't need too much on here because I'm not trying to strip the enamel with the solder and the heat of the solder. 
I'm just trying to add enamel to it, or I mean add solder to it, tin it. So, just twist it around a little bit. You be careful when doing this because it can fling and hit you. I'm wearing glasses. All right, and that's the true test of how well the enamel came off is whether or not the solder takes. And you can see it took there at the tip where it needs to. That's the most important bit. And I should have probably dipped this in flux before I did that because that will help remove some of the enamel bits out of the way. If you, I like to use wax flux whenever I'm tinning wires, whether they're stranded or solid. And I just dip it in, it gets a little flux on it. And I think it really helps uh, for the solder to take to the wire, in my experience. There we go. Yeah, I mean, even just that actually improved improved the tinning quite a bit. So, flux works magic. Uh, as they say, you can never have too much. You can have too much, but um, it's unlikely. You, yeah, generally speaking... Just keep applying flux, but you may need to clean it off afterwards if you do actually have too much on there. Okay, so now that that wire was done, let's go back to this one. So I'll start with I'll start with the sandpaper. So here we are. Let's put that in there, and I got it on the spool. There's no way I'd be able to do this without it being on the spool for me to pull. Okay, first of all, it's really hard to figure out where I'm grabbing this at. So let me try getting down there at the bottom. All right, I got it. Oh, and look at that. Pulled it right in half. Let's try again. All right, get that in there. Get it in there again. Get it in there again. Oh, and pulled it apart again. So sandpaper does not work because you have to apply too much pressure. Maybe you could get a really fine sandpaper. Maybe that would work for you. I'm not going to try it. Okay, so let's go to the knife. Okay, and I'm going to zoom in. So the first problem that we have, of course, is that we can't actually tell um, if it's working or not like the stuff whoops is the same color either way um, now if this were larger we actually would see the enamel coming off because there is a slight difference in color but with this size of wire you really just can't see it if I pull it up with my naked eye I will be able to see it but it's pretty much impossible to see it from where it actually is right now. But I'm just going to do this anyway, because I know that it's working to some degree. I don't know how well. Okay, now we've gone around four times. This is the fifth time, but what the hey, I'll just do it anyway. Okay. So now if we pull it up close, let's see if you can see. Uh, okay, whoops. Uh, where did it go, where did it go? It's still on the spool, it couldn't have gone far. I cannot get it. <laughs> All right, there we are. So you may be able to see there's a slight, slight, slight difference in color. But the thing's so tiny, it, it's just, it's almost impossible to tell. Let me bring it up to my eye and see if I can tell how good it is. You know, I just can't say. But I don't think that it's that good. Without the visibility, it's hard to tell. But the important thing is that the solder will tell us because we'll be able to see that nice tin color, or we won't. So let's bring this up. 
See if we can get it to go in. There we go. All right, so we got some flux on it. That's gonna help us out a bit. And then, uh, the temperature is low enough here and it hasn't been too long, so my tip still looks good. I'm just gonna put a little bit of fresh solder onto it. And then, let's see if we can touch it to it. All right. And let's see. Come on. Focus, focus. Wish I had a third hand I could press this to make it focus. All right. Well, you may just have to trust me that it did tin a little. I'm going to try this one more time. All right. Yeah. So you can see that it did tin a little. It's hard to tell just how well. I'm gonna pull it up to my naked eye. And it looks like it did get on every side. So, so that worked out all right. Now the true test, let's get our little test board here and see how well it takes to the test board. Let me move that sharp out of the way. First thing that I'm gonna do here is move this over so that we're only seeing the most important part. Or maybe I'll just turn it upside down. Yeah, I'll turn it upside down and we'll just ignore all the other wires here. Let's just worry about our one that we just made. And then let's heat up that pad. We need to get a little bit of solder on the iron there to help us. All right, there we go. Now it's flowing nicely. And right, let's use this pad over here as well. Those will be our two pads. I always like to put a little bit of solder on the iron first, get it right on the tip. I'll show you this again. Because having a little solder right on the tip will help the pad to take the heat. And then applying the solder right next to it helps the pad take the solder. So I'm going to put a little bit more on here. There we go. I like those beads. Those are nice beads. Okay, so I've already got this tinned, so it'll reheat very easily, and I've already got that tinned, so I just touch them together. Boop. And there we are. Nice and sturdy. It's going to work perfectly. I'm actually going to put that a little bit different. There we go. I like that more. Yeah, that's super sturdy. That's great. Okay, now we'll take this other one here. And if I can see it. Okay, that one took as well. So now I'm going to bring the iron back up to 400 for a second. Because... I still need to clip this from the coil and get the other side tinned. All right, it's up at 400 already. Let me turn the fume extractor on because those fumes are gonna go crazy. I'm just doing this over by the fume extractor. All right, and then let's bring the iron right there. Okay. Make sure it goes all the way in that solder bead. And I'm not sure if we got it or not. Let's, let's see. I can't tell. Oh no, it took, it took. 
Alright, we're good. Now, last thing. Turn it on, back down, and then turn it off. Turn the fume extractor off. And then the very last thing that we're going to do is a continuity check with the multimeter to make sure that our experiment went well. So I'm going to put this off screen. So when you hear it beep, you know that it worked. So let's touch down here and then touch over here. Oh, it needs to be on continuity mode. Oh, I'm not quite touching down there, right? Some. Hmm. So it looks like whatever method we used on that end might not have been adequate. Let's try the other one real quick. Or I might not be touching to the pad the right way. Okay. Let me switch over to my fine tips. I think that actually might make the difference here. Okay, let me try the fine tips, because sometimes the large ones... Hmm, now it looks like... It looks like... Oh, no, I'm not touching the pad. Okay, good. So there, I think it was just a matter of I wasn't quite touching on the tip, and um, around the tip there's something that is preventing it from conducting on the other ones. Okay, there we go, yeah. So that, oh, it's hard to see it to make sure I'm actually making contact with it. Okay, so we're gonna do this one other way. I'm gonna turn the iron back on for a second and we're going to solder these down directly to the board because they're still a little hard to test Oops, let me get that out of the way. I think that, 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 I mean, the contacts are good enough for the solder to take, so they're good enough to be conductive, but there may not be enough surface area that's conductive uh, for us to easily get a reading on the multimeter. But if we just touch this into here, there we go. Well, I'm going to put the fume extractor back on. Reach my fume quota for the day. Oh, oh, that's a good one too soon. Still, still. Good. That one's good. Now let's get this other one. Still. Still. Oh, that burns my fingers. What do we got? Okay, so here we are. Let's try that one more time. And I think this time we'll find that it was sufficient. It was just kind of hard to test on the tips alone. Perfect. That one, I don't know. 
know if I'd call that perfect. Okay. So I don't know, there might be something on my tips from something I've done that's preventing them from being as conductive as they ought to be. Because even if I, no, no, that's working fine. So let's try this one more time. So that one's perfect. And then this one. Is there, is there rosin on top of that? I'm gonna try soldering it one more time. Might have to go to the 400 degrees method. wasn't actually attached there we go I didn't see that because it's you know so tiny and all okay how do I get that thing to attach it was attached on the one side but not the other somehow it had come loose all right that would make a lot more sense okay okay let's get you to go in there You can do it, buddy. You can make it, pal. I'm gonna burn my fingers. Can't see where the end of this is. Without the enamel, it's so tiny. All right. So the other side, actually, um, wasn't actually connected into the pad. It looks like what happened was the enameled part actually slid through the solder bead and the, the part that was tinned was actually out over here. Perfect. All right. So, great success then. Excellent success. So hopefully you've enjoyed Amateur Hour. Hopefully you've been able to learn from my experiences and mistakes and you get on your path a little quicker because of it. Feel free to leave any comments below if you've got some better ideas. I know that there are some ways to remove this chemically uh, the ways I've seen, I don't really think are, mm, I don't think the trade-offs are worth it with with the uh, the simplicity of the, the ways that I've shown. Um, but if you know of other ways or you've got some techniques, please uh, leave a comment. If somebody else has got a video that you think explains this even better, I'd love to see it. Um, and so thanks for watching. And if you want to see more stuff like this, please subscribe and I'll try to get out things you like. I'm turning this back on for a minute because there's an obvious thing that I didn't show, which is what happens if we just get a good glob of solder on a pad and we stick the wire in there without taking off the enamel or tinning it first. So because you'll notice, you can't really see it, but you can kind of see it. There's a small shiny dot in the center there, which is that when we cut it, Obviously, there's no enamel in the center of the wire, so there is some of the wire exposed. Well, let's go ahead and try that. So I'm going to heat up the solder here and put that on in the hole if I can get it in the hole. Let's see. Alrighty, this is perfect example of why this is a bad idea. Alright, so let me show you here. What you're seeing is that the solder won't take. The enamel actually repels the solder. So you may be able to get it in there, especially if you have a solder blob that's large enough, but you're not going to get a, a good solder joint. So it may or may not work. The solder may be so repelled that even though it sticks in, 
it's not actually getting a connection on that tip. There might be a little well or hole underneath of it. Or because the solder is weaker, you might have, and this actually turned out, oh, nope, nope, it came out. I was gonna say this actually turned out pretty well. But no, because the solder is weaker and it's not making a good connection, it comes right on out of there without, without any excessive force at all. So let's see if you can see that, yeah. So that is why it's important in the first place to get the enamel off. And along that note, there's also the advice of, well, why not just set your, your iron as hot as it can go and burn it off that way? Well, let me show you what happens. I gotta turn on the fume extractor here because this is gonna be nasty. Spoiler alert. So I've got my iron as hot as it goes, which is 450 degrees Celsius. And let's see what happens when we try to get solder on here. Oh, it's not doing it with this one. Uh, if I tried it with my other, my, let me pull up now. Where did it go? Okay, so I'm gonna clean off the tip. I mean, it's it's not good, but I'm gonna show you worse. So here's here's the solder I, I use for a lot of things. Watch this. Watch this. Oh, it's not happening this time. Okay, last time the solder was actually jumping away, like it was it was going down the wick and wouldn't even get onto the iron. Um, but for right now, whatever reason, it's working. But look, look how quickly that oxidizes. So it just gets super oxidized super quickly. The solder gets really nasty. I mean, look at how nasty that is. That's just from the, the rosin in the solder just burning. So maybe you had solder that didn't have any flux in it. I don't know. And then uh, let's just see what happens here. So it's still, it works pretty well uh, in terms of it does get the enamel off. Oh, and that, dang it, I did it on the video and it just turns out perfect. It looks like a good idea. But um, let, me, let me see if I can get this to... Okay, there we go. That's, that's one of the side effects. So look at that. Like we're getting nasty, nasty um, oxidization and like burning of chemicals or something on here. It's just, it's just nasty. It's, it's, it's no bueno. Well, you've reached the end of the video, which tells me one of two things. Either you love the sound of my voice and it helps you fall asleep at night, or you liked it. Otherwise, you shouldn't watch to the end of a video that you don't like. And not that I'm trying to tell you how to live your life, but if you like the things you like, you get more of what you like. In any case, feel free to troll me in the comments below. Check out the description. There's probably related videos. This video might even be part of a set, in which case the playlist link will be there. And if you're interested in more stuff that's somewhere in this realm between soldering and JavaScript, that's what the subscribe button's for. Or so I've been told. Send positive vibes, karma, uh, feedback, suggestions for improvement are all welcome. Thank you. doing stuff with the things.